Well, hello. In this particular video segment, I'm going to be focusing on the simple machine known as a lever. And it's a very common kind of machine. In fact, it's the example that I used in the previous section of the notes where we talked about simple machines in general. But when we focus in on levers, I want to start by describing three different ways that levers can be used. And there's actually a very simple modification that we make to a, a simple lever to get it to work three different ways. So I want to start by drawing maybe one that you're kind of familiar with. Imagine a lever like this, you can just draw one with me here, where the pivot point, that's got a fancy name known as the fulcrum, if the pivot point is right in the middle of the lever, so let's say we have the load here on one end and the effort here on the other end, if the fulcrum is right in the middle of those two, then the only function that this lever has is it allows us to change the direction of the push. Normally, if we want to lift a load up, we have to pull or push up. And that can be really hard on the muscles. And just to get the, the body to be able to do that, or maybe it's just it's up too high. But if we can instead maybe pull down or push down on this end of the lever, then it just makes it much easier to do that. So there's no advantage in any way in terms of how far we're moving it or how, how heavy it feels. It's just a change in the direction. But there's another way that we can work a lever. We put the load at this end again and the effort at this end. But this time, if the pivot point is very close to the effort, then that's going to make this end of the lever move much farther than this end does. So you can see just a tiny little motion here is going to cause a much greater motion over here. So the end result is we get much more speed. So sometimes if, if speed is what you're after, then you can set up a lever like this and it'll move very fast. However, there's a drawback to this. It's going to feel very heavy, much heavier than the load would if you were to move it just by hand. So there's always a drawback and advantage to every machine. In this case, the advantage is the speed, but the drawback is it's going to feel very heavy. Okay, and the third way we can set up a lever Again, we put our load here at the left and our effort here on the right. We can set it up differently. But if we put the fulcrum here at the end closest to the load, then just the reverse is happening. Our hand is going to have to go through much more motion than the little bit of motion that we're going to get for the load. That was the case, for example, when we were trying to move the rock. But we weren't trying to, to move the rock really fast or really far. We just wanted to move it a little bit. So... The advantage of this is we can lift a whole lot more force. These make the load feel very light. So our effort force is much less than it would have to be if we were just going to lift the load without the machine. But the drawback is we get less speed for, for the motion. So let's look at an example of one of the typical machine problems that we do with levers. This is very similar to the one that we worked with uh, on the part two of the notes previously. So in this case, notice we have the fulcrum closer to the effort, which is a little bit like this second one here. So the first question I'm going to ask here is, how will the load move compared to how far the hand pushes? And it's given here in the problem. The hand pushes down 10 centimeters, but because the load is so far, it's raised by 20 centimeters. So that means the load moves two times farther or more then the hand pushes. And then with the other information, for example, I, I tell you that this is a three kilogram load and that the force from the hand is 60 newtons. I wrote 50, that should say 60 on my copy. Your copy probably looks right. So let's calculate the work that we put into the lever. So this is what we call the input work. And in here, remember, we always write in symbols or in words before we do a calculation what we're doing. That way I know that you know what you're doing. So the input work is what the hand is doing. This is the effort force times the effort distance. Didn't leave myself much room there. Effort force times effort distance. And that time sign kind of got messed up there. I hope your work's a little neater than mine. 
All right. The force from the hand, that's what we call the effort, is 60 newtons. And then the distance, this is the distance that the hand pushes. Be careful. There's going to be two distances given in these problems. Make sure you get the right one. This is only 10 centimeters. Now, because I want my work to be measured in joules, I don't want to leave it as 10 centimeters. But if you look on a meter stick, 10 centimeters is one-tenth of the whole stick. So that means it's a tenth or 0.1 meters. And when we multiply those together, that gives us 6 joules. And sometimes we just write it this way, the work, and then a little in. That means input. We could even write input. So 6 joules input. And how much do we get out? Well, we're moving 3 kilograms, and we're lifting it up by 20 centimeters. So we can see we're giving it some energy in the form of gravitational potential energy. So that's how we calculate the output work. We should write output work. And then we're going to do the same kind of calculation we did for GPE, which is M times G times H. This is the mass that we're moving, 3 kilograms, times little g, which is a measure of gravity's pull here on the surface of the Earth. It's 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and then times the height that it moves through. But that's 20 centimeters, or 2 tenths of a meter stick, 0.2. And so you grab a calculator and you work through that, and you're going to get, I did this earlier, 5.88 joules. So I'll put a little out here next to the work. So notice that, just as always, with every machine that we use for real, we always have to put in a little more work than we get out. And that's because of that friction that, that happens here where the, the fulcrum uh, maybe rubs against the, the platform of the lever. So the efficiency. This is the work out divided by the work in and then times 100%. You see I'm using abbreviations here that just make it a little bit more compact. So that's 5.88 divided by 6, and then times 100. Again, I did that earlier. That ends up 98%. That's actually very efficient. Most machines are less than that. So there's an example of how we do a lever problem, and you'll have some different ones. There really, there's not much difference between one lever problem and another with, with what I'm going to ask you to do. So if you can get those down and kind of remember the relationships, you'll have no problem with this. So I'll give you a chance for you to practice on your own now. Good luck.